Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Ask the Expert series. We are lucky enough and very excited um, to have Angie here with us from Harneys to speak about careers in the legal field, life of a legal secretary. What are the ins and outs of a day in life? of a legal secretary. So before we get started, a bit of background on Connect by Nova, if you haven't been to our sessions before. My name is Hannah Jackson. I am the co-founder and career services manager of Connect by Nova. So Connect by Nova is a new non-for-profit organization here in Cayman that is fully focused on providing our community with careers advice and work readiness resources. So this can include hosting webinars like these, to working one-on-one -on -one with individuals on their own career action plans. So when working one-on-one -on -one with individuals, we assist with resume building, LinkedIn optimization, um, and even helping individuals with their own direct applications. So that's a little bit about Connect and who we are. Now I'm gonna pass it over to Angie to introduce herself and get into today's topic. Great, thanks Hannah, thank you very much. Um, welcome to everybody who's attending this seminar. Uh, I'm extremely grateful and excited to be a part of this Ask the Experts uh, session. Um, so thanks again to Hannah for facilitating this. Um, yes, as Hannah mentioned, my name is Angie Perido. I am currently the lead legal secretary at Harney's. Um, I started at Harney's as a legal secretary in 2015, and I worked my way into a lead role, um, which basically means uh, I manage the other secretaries in the law firm. So everything from scheduling, um, just the go-to for both the other legal secretaries and lawyers um, for guidance and, and training. So I currently support five lawyers uh, and also take on the other additional administration roles with managing in the lead uh, position. Um, so I thought I might just give a further background into how I got into being a legal secretary and working in the legal industry. Um, it's, well, I've been working as a legal secretary for the past 20 years. Um, so it's been, I can't believe it's been that long. Um, I've been working in the Cayman Islands now for 17 years. Um, so when I decided to uh, go into law, um, I never was quite interested in being a lawyer. Um, I didn't want to spend the money at university and I certainly didn't want to spend the time it took to complete the studies. So instead I took a two year course at my local university college um, and I ended up with a diploma as a legal secretary. So in that two year course, I learned many different areas of law, um, got you know uh, a flavor for kind of what I was interested in, what I wasn't interested in. Um, so that was a great experience to give you, uh, a full spectrum of what you can, you can expect working as a legal secretary. Uh, I've worked in civil, I've worked in criminal, um, in civil, uh, areas. I've worked in litigation. I've worked, uh, in conveyancing, which is real estate. Um, also I worked in criminal law. Um, and that was really, uh, really interesting as, working in the Crown Prosecutor's Office, um, Homicide and Family Protection Unit. So I've kind of had a little bit of everything, um, but that just kind of goes to show as a legal secretary, um, there are different areas that um, you can branch out into depending on what you're interested in. Uh, working as legal secretary over the past 20 years has been an exciting and fulfilling career. Uh, each area of law I worked in has provided a unique experience. Um, one of the aspects I particularly like uh, is being actively involved in the day-to-day -day running of files. Um, you get to see the results of your hard work uh, through your clients and successful cases. Uh, I'm a team player, and as a legal secretary, it's a really collaborative position. Um, you not only work with to support lawyers, uh, but you also work with a wider group often, uh, including finance, IT, operations. Um, so it's, it is a really fulfilling and exciting career. Um, what I thought I'd touch on today, uh, five different aspects, um, the role of a legal secretary, opportunities in the field, education and qualifications, the current market, and my final top recommendations. So, okay, so roles and responsibilities. Uh, as a broad description, uh, legal secretary um, 
is to proactively assist fee earners to help clients succeed in realizing their business or personal objectives through the efficient delivery of appropriate legal advice and assistance. So legal secretaries are administrative assistants uh, with an additional training in law. Um, they also provide administrative support to lawyers. In short, uh, what I always tell the other legal secretaries when I'm recruiting for these positions is it's our job to make the attorneys look good, meaning we're here to support um, them to do their job so we can provide them the time to work on billable client matters. And that's how it kind of works, right? So as much as they we can support them, they can be working on um, billable files. So that's kind of a very simple way of explaining it, but I think it's um, a very true one. Uh, and if, you know, oftentimes I remind uh, my colleagues that that's really what we're here to do. So this is a non-exhaustive list, but it does look pretty long. But I, I thought I'd pick out some of the um, important um, responsibilities um, and duties that I see day to day uh, in a law firm. So first one, opening and managing files. Billing, um, that's also very important. Working with our finance systems. You know, attorneys can bill all they want, but if we're not actually sending invoices out and getting fees paid, it's really for nothing. So that's something that is um, very important. Um, if you're involved in litigation areas of law, court preparation and bundling, um, we are seeing, you know, post-COVID things are going a lot more remote. Um, so electronic filings, um, but that's ever changing. Uh, there's filing and lodging documents um, with government entities, including the courthouse, SEMA, lands and survey. Uh, basic admin tasks, photocopying, printing and scanning completing expense forms, uh, arranging for payment of external invoices, archive and records management, which is very important. Um, there are limitation laws and laws surrounding what you can do with client files and when you can they can be destroyed and how you have to store them. Um, audio transcription of court hearings and meetings, arranging for couriers, uh, preparing service letters and other correspondence, arranging work-related reservations for fee earners, business travel, conferences, shredding of confidential documents, filing documents using a file management system. So that would be um, the internal filing system. Um, most places now have a actual management filing system. Um, and then managing a diary and calendar for your fee earners, which is also very important. So opportunities within the field. So legal secretaries can find positions, of course, in law firms. Um, within a law firm, um, outside of the standard or uh, typical legal secretary position, um, they can also find um, jobs as transcriptionists. So if you have a legal secretary title and you're very good at word processing and you're very fast with typing and it's something you're interested in, you'll often find in larger firms um, people transitioning into a, of a more word processing operator or transcriptionist role. Um, we do see that with um, the legal transcribers that we have um, on islands or ones that we bring in to islands, um, but it is a good skill to have. Uh, we also um, find positions in government agencies, which is great, the courthouse. So the judicial clerks that work at the courthouse, judges, secretaries, uh, again, prosecutor's office, so you're working um, on, in criminal, but um, for the prosecution. Uh, also, you can find positions in legal departments and corporations. So these are not law firms, but they're um, companies that have in-house counsel, um, such as DART would have um, in-house counsel. Um, so again, just a different kind of outlook on, on it's not the standard law firm um, positions that uh, legal secretaries are finding positions. Education and qualifications. So how do I become a legal secretary? The first thing is get your high school diploma or equivalent. That's very important. Um, I would say enrolling courses um, such as word processing, computer courses, business writing, and office administration. Also considering to take a program that would offer a certificate or a diploma in a legal secretary program. Um, I would say there are a lot of positions um, on island where legal secretaries 
are successful and they don't have a legal secretary diploma, but they do have some sort of administration background and they certainly have the experience in working with computers and business writing. That's very important. So touching on that just quickly, the certificate and diplomas, um, do you know anywhere or which organizations or educational institutions do offer yeah. legal secretary diplomas? I was looking, I was doing some research um, before before today, and unfortunately, UCCI did offer um, a paralegal legal um, support course. They don't offer that anymore, um, and th- which is unfortunate. Um, I I think they offer an administrative course, um, but they don't have the legal specialization. So I think for anybody here, either doing online, there's some really great online, um, which I can share with you after this, I can get that information together. But there are some, yes, uh, online courses that you can do, um, which, you know, when I'm going to recruit for a legal secretary position, that's not I don't get dissuaded by that um, mm-hmm. at all. I really encourage people to take the initiative to take these courses. Um, but certainly uh, UCCI and other um, places on island, you can, uh, you know, get experience in word, pro- sorry, word processing, computers, and business writing. Um, there is one other company, but I didn't want to put it in here because I wasn't able to vet it. So I'm not sure how... Um, how successful they are um, in providing okay. education and training. Um, but I can certainly do a little bit more research on that and um, and get it back to you guys. Yeah, that, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, I think also just to add to that, for anyone who is looking for courses, um, there are, like Andy mentioned, there are great options online. And that's not just for one-time courses or certificates. There are also diplomas as well that you can start online. So I would definitely suggest doing your own research, um, maybe looking at other legal secretaries and what certifications they have as well and seeing where you can potentially start that journey. Yeah, that's great. And I think too, just as a side note, you know, post COVID, um, we really are seeing a lot more online learning. Um, Mm -hmm. Whereas maybe, you know, five, 10 years ago, that was kind of the alternative but now it's really being embraced. And there's some really, um, like you said, if, if you know, everyone if, go do your research, there, there are potentially really good um, education uh, institutions that are offering good things. So definitely take advantage of that. And in lieu of that, although maybe not something to put on a resume, LinkedIn, LinkedIn Learning has phenomenal, um, yeah. you know, sessions and courses that you can um, take part of and also, um, just to see if you're interested, you know, get a little bit more information on certain types of things that you know that you need. And if that's just something that's not for you, it's a great taste of, of what it's all about. So I've picked some top skills uh, that legal secretary should have. Um, one of them is attention to detail and proofreading abilities. So uh, on a day-to-day basis, you'll be dealing with documents. It doesn't matter what area of law you're working in. Um, and it's really um, up to the secretary or the attorneys are relying on the secretaries to make sure that they're not missing anything. So you're kind of the second set of eyes. Um, So attention to detail where maybe they haven't been able to do that because they're busy doing other legal um, aspects of work. Um, You're kind of the go-to for that. And that's really important. And that's really where um, legal secretaries become successful and where lawyers really appreciate the support. Um, organizational skills um, is very important. I think that's probably important in most positions, but it's certainly important um, in law. There's a lot of um, instances where there's deadlines, limitation periods, and missing those things uh, can really be um, consequential for the clients and for the firm. So having an organizational um, skill um, is is a real asset. Uh, ability to multitask and manage competing demands. That's kind of a daily thing. Um, You're always kind of juggling. Um, I particularly like that. Um, It's something that I, uh, you know, kind of drives me at work. Um, I'm able to multitask and manage, but that also comes with a set of um, skills for prioritization. Um, And that really comes with um, experience, knowing what takes priority. Um, But it is something that uh, is invaluable um, as a legal secretary. 
So again, I've put here efficient MS Word programs, Word, Excel, Outlook. That's very important, especially in today's times. Uh, business writing skills, writing emails, even if it's to the court, to a client, to a coworker, we need to have those um, business writing um, abilities. You're representing your boss, your lawyer, your firm, so you want to make sure that those are those are well. Um, an in-depth knowledge of legal documents and terminology is an asset, and that's something that you would learn in some sort of diploma or certificate program. Um, it will just help you in your day-to-day. -day. Um, having gone through my course many years ago, there are still things that I remember that I lean on, and I'm not just doing a task to do it. I have a background and an understanding of why we're doing it that way. Um, Excellent time management and again, organizational skills and typing skills. Um, we work on computers all day long. Um, it's 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 actually quite fascinating looking back and you know in a day and thinking what you did in a day and sitting at a computer doing typing documents. Um, but you're at a computer all day, so typing. Um, as, even aside from transcription, which is uh, you know a really um, great asset, uh, typing skills which you can also do online very easily yeah, to gain to practice. The typing, yeah, to the typing skills, there are tons of free resources online where you can practice your typing skills. Um, and then you can always take a test to see exactly what your word per minute Exactly. Is, right? Um, so that's just like any other skill, like you work on that, you practice it, and then you continuously get better at it. Um, just out of curiosity, what is the usual typing words per minute or... Words that you I think see they, from a legal sector. Yeah, I, I mean, I think these days they say about eighty words per minute. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think, again, where it's kind of a, it's different than it was, say, five, ten years ago, where they're not going to give typing tests. Most places aren't going to give you a typing test, um, mm -hmm. but if they do, if you don't pass the eighty, they're not going. It's if you have, um, if you're able to type. Um, so whereas maybe you know, ten years ago it was sixty words per minute, they have bumped it up to eighty. Um, but again, that's not a hard and fast. But if you can strive for 80, you're doing very, very well. <laughs> yeah, I think 80 words per minute is a stellar <laughs> yes, number yes. to have, um, especially if if you're currently an administrator and you're at maybe 65 words per minute, then you know your goal that you yeah. need to reach to. Yeah. Um, we did have a question come in, um, come in asking if employers are willing to invest in training someone who has either studied business administration um, in order to access training as a legal secretary. Um, I do know that a lot of the law firms have been rolling out trainee legal secretary programs or junior legal secretary programs. So that is the perfect opportunity for someone who might have have had experience in the legal field specifically to get their foot in the door and then start their path towards becoming a legal secretary. Yeah, ab absolutely. And, you know, it can be challenging to enter the legal industry without having that experience. Mm -hmm. However, if you have a couple of these skills or a little bit of the experience, like, like you said, Hannah, getting your foot in the door, I do know that there's a lot of, um, you know, law firms on island that want to do that. We want to invest in staff. We want to bring young or new professionals into the fold and really encourage their for their education. Um, so for Harneys, we definitely do that. I know we're not the only ones. Most most of the other law firms do as well. Um, for example, I, I had um, a young man start with us about seven years ago. He was 18 at the time. And um, he was, you know, just doing support stuff, kind of what, you know, a runner doing stuff, um, admin stuff that we need him to do. Mm -hmm. He kind of was a floater. So he went to different departments. He, he, he just did what he needed to do. He's worked his way up and I've just now got him a promotion to be junior legal secretary. So he yeah. actually didn't, take any further education but mm -hmm. because of the experience that he has obtained over the past seven years we were able to provide him with that um, career advancement which is great yeah and that's an opportunity that now he can only grow from yes there, right um, and, and should he want and should there be training um which i'm sure there will be um then yes we would be happy to facilitate that for him so the current market which it's a little bit difficult to talk about because the market has really changed over the past, what, three years, four years. So even farther than that, um, just with technological advances and post-COVID era, the role of the legal secretary has changed in the sense that it's become a lot more remote 
based or online based. For example, um, filing things at court, I think I was saying filing things with government agencies where you know, before you would be creating bundles or you'd be physically going down to court either for hearings or filings, now we're seeing a lot of that stuff being done remotely. Um, and as you can imagine, a lot of lawyers don't do technological well, so they really do lean on their support for these types of things. Um, they're busy, you know, doing the law, doing um, running files, and it's really it's really up to the support to kind of get them through to the end. So post COVID, and just as we've advanced um, over the past years. Um, legal secretaries are becoming more important than they ever have been. Um, they are posing a much broader skill set, um, and that's supporting just a changing time. So I think we have over 30 law firms in the Cayman Islands, um, and I think there is going to be always a need for legal support, um, and there's always going to be a need for good legal support. Um, 30 law firms, meaning small to very large, um, so as long as we have, you know, a society um, kind of operating the way we do, we're always going to need um, le legal support for legal matters. So as promised, my top recommendations, if you can, try to obtain a secretarial or administrative support course to gain skills that will benefit you greatly. Strong verbal and written communication is really key. Again, I've put in here typing and computer skills, MS Office. Flexibility and adaptability is really important as well. Um, it's not a position where you're going to come in to work and do the same thing every day. You might have five different things to do. So you're going to have to be able to be flexible with that and adapt to whatever the situation is in front of you. And what's really, really important is being a team player. Um, I think that works with any organization. Um, you work very close with the team. You work, yes, you work for professionals. You also work for wider teams often. Um, and it's, it's really important to be a team player and to kind of go above and beyond and have a good attitude because in law firms, it can get stressful in times, but, you know, having a great attitude and being a team player goes a really long way. Thank you so much, Andy. That was a lot of information that I'm sure everyone is taking in right now <laughs> and thinking about, okay, what are my next steps? How can I start my career as a legal secretary or in law? I know we did have one question come through as well, asking, for example, as an administrator, if you do not have that necessary legal experience, or like, like we mentioned, there is no legal course on island at the moment, what would you suggest in terms of getting their foot in the door right now? If let's say a junior legal secretary position is not available at the moment, how would you suggest they start? Um, so yes. So getting into a law firm, um, whether it be through reception, so it could be through a different avenue as well, right? So there's receptionists, so entry-level positions, which is without the experience and kind of without the education, you're looking for entry-level positions, reception, operations, areas um, that are more base. Through that, you get your foot in the door, you show your work ethic, you show your abilities, you show your enthusiasm for um, moving into other areas of the law firm. And most law firms, if not all, will want to encourage that. So for example, if you see a receptionist position in a law firm, apply for that. And hopefully you are successful at that. And when you do become that receptionist, um, really just soak it all in and learn about the business and, you know, ask questions of your colleagues and be interested. And alongside that, maybe try to do some online courses. Um, so it's really kind of working your way up. And sometimes mm -hmm. that's hard to do because, of course, we want to always just land where we want to land. But a little bit of patience and starting from kind of the bottom up, you become you can become very successful. Yeah, I do think that's one thing that um, a lot of students or new professionals, young professionals, you know, they obviously want to start at the top. They want to be making the big bucks, you know, yeah. immediately start <laughs> where they see all of their, you know, other professionals that they look up to, right? Right. Um, but it is true. You do have to start at the bottom and and work hard have that great work ethic work your way up put in time for those courses maybe some extra hours right really 
be there, be adaptable and flexible wherever the team needs that support right. and say, you yes. know what, I can help with that extra project. That's fine. I'm a receptionist, but if you need help, I'll, yeah. I'll help you out. Right. And then all those little projects that you do take on or all those yeses that you say to new opportunities, then the team sees that they see hundred percent passion, your dedication. And then from there, that's where the other doors start to open. So 100% agree Angie, with everything you just stated, because you do have to start somewhere. Yeah. Um, and, and then a couple of years down the line, you'll be slowly working your way up to that position that you really wanted at the beginning. Yes, exactly. Um, from a high schooler's perspective, um, in terms of internships, so mm. let's say they're interested in law, but they don't know which area to start in. Can you talk a little bit about internships and kind of what Hardee's um, has available? Great. Yeah. Um, internships are great. They're a wonderful opportunity to kind of get a feel for what it looks like to work in an office. You know, some um, students haven't even, you know, worked in office before. They probably haven't. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like? How does that feel? What's the temperature of an office? I think getting in somewhere, say for Harneys, in a spot like litigation, um, which is an area where you're doing a lot of kind of class, not classic law, but legal practices. So whether, you know, we're doing that in litigation, you're also kind of having um, a flavor in that in all the other areas of law. But in litigation, you're learning the court system, you're learning legal documents, you're becoming familiar with uh, legal terminology. Aside from the legal, there's also just the uh, admin aspect, right? So doing a lot of things um, on the computer with documents. So you, you do gain a lot of experience um, that way. And let me tell you, coming in as an intern, even though it may not be a salaried position, we remember, employers remember the interns that have come to work on time, that work hard, that ask questions, mm -hmm. that, you know, show that team player attitude. They do not go unnoticed. And the following year, or if, you know, a student comes in and um, they're going back to school the following year, they may be done school. That's a great opportunity to bring that person back as a work experience student. And then a paid temporary employee if they're still doing their studies and then eventually hopefully um if they're interested in in, in an area of the law firm come back as a as an employee um so i don't look i don't think any of us look at internships as a one-off thing we would hope to look at them as a reoccurring thing and that's what a student wants to hear right because yeah. they're, they're sending out applications and they don't know what the response is going to be or i don't have the experience yet but nine times out of ten if not most of the time employers want you to come in and gain as much experience, figure out if this is the right career path or the field you want to go down in terms of um, your further education. And then from there, if you do a fantastic job, you know, like Angie said, like employers do remember. Yes. Right. So, I mean, I know my work experience students, I still message yeah. them to stay and they're from years back. I'm like, oh, look at what they're doing. Yes. Oh, you need yes. a recommendation letter. <laughs> oh, of course you're fantastic. Right. So Special, like interns and work experience students have, su have such a special place in my heart. Um, I'm sure it's the same with a lot of um, different yes. people because honestly, at the end of the day, we just appreciate the support and we appreciate your openness and willingness to learn, right? So I think that's the mindset you sh that students should go into with is that just go for it. We do have um, a question specific to what's the difference between a legal secretary and a paralegal? Okay, so legal secretary, paralegal. So paralegals usually have more training in law. Um, certainly in the Cayman Islands, our paralegals have either a, a degree in law um, or um, they, they have further education. They also have more experience um, working in the areas of law. So they're able to bill their time. So whereas legal secretaries don't bill their time, meaning if I work an hour on something, I'm not going to bill the client for it, right? Mm -hmm. A paralegal will do that because they have the skill set, they have the education. Um, so it's it's funny, obviously we're in the Cayman Islands. Here we typically do um, have paralegals that have law degrees. Um, they have the legal research aspect. You will also, there's overlap. You will find legal secretaries um, that do have experience in legal research. However, we kind of lean more to the paralegals to do that type of work. Um, mm -hmm. In Canada, certainly, you don't need a law degree to be a paralegal. Um, you really just need the experience. So you kind of need to justify the fact that you are so experienced in an area that you can bill a client for it. Um, mm -hmm. So that's really the main difference of education 
and uh, paralegals build their time. And they do less admin and more legal. So they're doing more legal support work and less administrative. Okay, so the day-to-day -day responsibilities from a legal secretary and paralegal, what are the main differences? So paralegals would be, I wouldn't call them junior attorneys, but that's almost what they are. They're also what we call fee earners. So the work that they're generating, the work that they're doing is creating fees um, for the client. So we have, we're, um, sorry, we have legal research. Um, they'll be involved in court preparation, document preparation. So whereas legal secretaries, yeah, we do that. Um, say if there's a big trial or hearing happening, paralegals will be very involved in um, uh, doing the bundles for court, the cross-referencing. Um, they'll also be able to look at documents um, from a legal perspective and be able to go back to the attorney and, um, you know, give um, a view on how something should be said or relate to the client. So that's also a collaborative um, aspect of paralegals, lawyers, legal secretaries. We kind of all work together like that. And so, for example, for a legal secretary or somebody wanting to aspire to become a legal secretary, what is a career progression example? For example, where would you start? In yeah, so progression, um, if you can get an administrative role, like any administrative role or support role in a law firm, starting there, again, if there's limited experience. And then really just learning on the job. I always say everything's learnable. Everything is teachable. If you come in and have the right attitude and work ethic, you can learn what legal secretaries do. You don't necessarily need the piece of paper. Of course, that's very helpful and it will only help you in your quest to get into a law firm in a position, but really having an administrative role and, and just showing up every day and learning as much as you can and, you know, asking questions. And even if there's somebody that's not in your department, you know, getting the information, like, what do you, what do you do? Why do you do this? Um, how can I learn more? Is there something I can help you with? That type of thing. So we start as an administrative support. So let's say like operations or admin assistant or receptionist. And then from there, does it go straight to trainee or junior legal secretary? Um, I don't if know if it would go straight. The opportunity arises. If the opportunity arises, yes, absolutely. And we would be offering um, training for that. Um, for example, I'm kind of at the moment um, helping out operations and a lead secretary in litigation. Well, lead secretary and I work in litigation. So my view, bringing in say a receptionist or an ops mm -hmm. assistant, depending on whether they want to be a receptionist and that's where they'd like to stay, that's fine. But what I'd really like to have happen is for that role to expand. So in two years time, who's ever sitting at reception that they've had conversations and experienced things, uh, different sides of the firm where they're thinking, oh, you know, wouldn't be great to go up and work in corporate. Like I'm really interested in compliance. Maybe mm -hmm. it's litigation, maybe it's transactional. Um, yeah. And then we have those conversations in career progression meetings, which we have every year. Um, so, and I think most places do have those meetings as well. So say you're a receptionist, you come around to your yearly annual review, and then you express to your manager, listen, I'm happy, but I would like to progress. And here's how I want to do that. And a good manager and a good a good firm will help you to do that. And like you said, also support when it comes to the education side, um, whether that is from a financial standpoint or even just providing study leave so that you can be able to take that time to continue your education to exactly. get to that next step in your career. Yeah. What would be your top tips in terms of making your resume stand out from all the others applying if you don't necessarily have or legal experience? Um. If you don't have experience, I would put education, but I'm assuming if you don't have experience, you probably don't have a lot of the relevant um, education. So I would really just uh, put why you want the position. So what skills do you have, whether they're classically trained and, you know, or not, what skills you do possess that will make you a good candidate for the position? It's actually, I've gone through recently like a, a huge round of interviewing for a couple different positions. And it is really difficult to get a, you know, a full idea of somebody. Even in an interview, mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to get a full idea um, or a picture of somebody. Um, so I think it's really just looking within yourself and being honest, right? We want candidates that are honest. So, you know, saying these like, you probably are wonderful, but making it, um, 
believable, you know, like mm -hmm. be honest. And if you don't have a lot of experience, that's fine to say too. Employees really appreciate honesty. So I don't have a lot of experience. Um, maybe that's not on a resume. Maybe that's in an interview, but I'm willing to learn and I'm willing to um, show up every day and do what I need to do. So um, I think having people that have the attitude, the right attitude, that's so valuable and it's it's not to go unnoticed. And of course, all the other things that we've been talking about, which is experience and education, of course, those are important. But if you don't have the attitudes to go along with that, you're not going to be successful. I think that's great advice. Really, that's what your cover letter is for and also the email that you're sending in, right? So trying to explain yourself a bit more than maybe what would have been limiting in your resume. So really saying, you know, I might not have all the experience or qualifications, but I am open to learning. I'm willing to come in, support yeah. you in whatever the task may be. And really explaining yourself and kind of like what your situation is and where your hopes and dreams are for your career. Yeah. Um, because the more genuine you are as a person, that, that really comes out in your application. And then in the interview setting, if you make it to interview, then you can talk more about that in detail. Um, but I completely agree to really just be yourself, be honest and open about what you are looking for. And that will transcribe into the application. Yeah. Somebody has asked, so usually you see one legal secretary for one lawyer, mm. right? Um, necessarily. So how, how are you supporting five, five fee earners or just explain how that works? <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, actually, that, <laughs> actually, like, wow, it's, that's a lot. <laughs> it's quite common to work for more than one attorney. If you're working, excuse me, for a smaller organization sometimes mm -hmm. you will work for like a sole proprietor which is one lawyer or okay. small but um typically mid to large size law firms you're working ratio four to five fearners um per secretary um now with that said so those are the attorneys that i support so we have a t we have 18 attorneys and so we have now three secretaries so we all take usually about four to five fearners with that said not all fee earners, sorry, I've been saying that a lot, meaning lawyers, obviously, um, have the same amount of output work. They don't need, they don't all need the same amount of support. So where you might have really busy associates who are kind of pumping up the work, who need the support, mm -hmm. that might be kind of your couple that you really need, are, I would high maintenance. You might work for a partner who you might not really need to support because he's not working on files necessarily. He might just need, you know, the other admin support. So managing a calendar, doing expense claims, that type of thing. So when looking at assigning or allocating fee earners to secretaries, it's really more about that specific fee earner. So I don't work for five lawyers that are, you know, requiring all the same amount of support. <laughs> um, and again, that comes into teamwork, right? So if that's the case, or if there's something going on any particular time, that's where, as lead, I'm kind of looking at workflow. And I'm kind of saying, okay, well, you know, the sec secretary has got like all this stuff on because her attorneys are all in court, but you know, mm -hmm. the other secretary, nobody's in court. So maybe we can try and divvy up the workload a little bit. So it definitely works. It sounds like a lot, but we have, um, we have a system to make sure nobody's drowning. <laughs> yeah. I think that the main question was, are you working simultaneously for five <laughs> lawyers who have tons of work? Technically, <laughs> yes, but it's very, <laughs> It's very uncommon for me to have five tasks from five different fiends that have the exact same priority, right? Um, yeah, and again, exactly. that's where priority um, um, abilities come in as well. Like what, I might have five things, but what's due in an hour? What's mm -hmm. gonna really suffer if I don't do it? And what can actually wait until this afternoon or tomorrow? And then communication, having, having that relationship with um, your lawyers, everything comes down to communication. So if, and it does happen, you get a couple things, you're not sure which one you should do first. So you just ask, hi, hi. I've got this to do for so-and-so, I've got this to do and for so-and-so. What like can you give me a deadline? And nine yeah. times out of ten, you'll get the answer. Don't worry, do that first. Mine can wait. So it's communication as well. Mm -hmm. So those top skills, remember, are open communication, being being able to have those great communication skills, but also being able to prioritize in terms of urgency and what is due today, what's due in an yeah. hour, what's due tomorrow. You know, what can wait, and then that organization aspect. Um, I feel like those are probably 
some of your top three skills, obviously definitely. typing as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you definitely. Know? Um, that was a reoccurring theme in this whole session is typing skills as well. But definitely that organizational aspect, being able to manage different calendars at the same time time and maybe different inboxes you know being able to manage your own workflow and saying okay I can do x y and z on my to-do list and then these two I can I can wait until this afternoon so yeah those are definitely the top skills that I've gotten out of um today's session I'm gonna just check the chat box again see if there's any more sure. questions that have come in maybe just check the Q&A see if there's anything that I have missed Okay, I don't think so. Um, so I think those are all the questions for this afternoon. I like to try and keep these to 45 minutes to an hour because I know a lot of you are joining in on your lunchtime. Thank you so much for taking out the time of your day as well, Andy, to spend time with us and explain, you know, what a legal secretary is, what are the day to day ins and outs, what are your tasks, what skills are required. Required, what's the career progression example? I feel like I've learned a lot of new things. Um, I feel like all the attendees have as well. So thank you so much for your time. Is there anything else you want to close out with or? Um, no, just to say thank you again to you, Hannah, and thank you everybody for uh, joining us today. I, I do hope that you um, get some takeaways from this helpful, helpful uh, little tidbits that you can take with you and just wishing you all much success um and uh yeah just uh keep doing what you're doing and and even joining this webinar here is um a one step right getting more information so if you're joining this you're doing you're doing the first step so good luck to everybody perfect thank you so much everyone i hope you all have a wonderful rest of the afternoon take bye. care bye